Hello friends, I'm Karina Chin with KarinasCreations.com and I want to welcome you today. It's Tuesday and I always do a Facebook Live Tuesday at 1 o'clock and if you're here, make sure you pop in and say hi. If you're watching the recording, you can still comment if you want and I really hope that you will enjoy the videos. So I am in Edmonton, Alberta, and I've been stamping for about 14 years. I think I'm going on 15 now. It's really hard to tell. Time just flies, especially during COVID. Don't you find it that that happens? So make sure you comment and say hi. And then whenever you comment, like, or share my video, and this includes YouTube as well, I put your name into a draw to win a card that I made the previous week. So last week was I made this card. And I talked about the new pastels that Stampin' Up! has. So this is a popping pastel technique, and I drew Karen's name. So Karen Yeoman, I'll be popping this card in the mail for you. So thank you so much for commenting on my video. Hello, Angela. How, how are you? Hello, Brenda. How are you doing today? So I had a lot of trouble trying to decide what I wanted to share I spent all weekend pretty much prepping kits for my stamp camp that's coming up this Saturday with Jen and Candy who are in the States. So it was a lot of prep work, but I'm so happy with how the kits turned out. And then I thought today, what would I share? So I have been playing with this, with these brand new Give It A Whirl dies. And I had a beautiful cheat sheet done up with all the die cut pieces and I have no clue where they walked away. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. We'll just keep going on. I have a few announcements, though, before I share these. Look at this card that I'm going to show you how to make today. How cute is this? Isn't that so cute? I just love these little guys. And then this is the birthday one, right, with cocktails. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that you guys can use with this. Hello, Camilla. How are you today? Thank you for joining me. So on... Uh, two weeks. So June 26, I have a virtual card class coming and the virtual card class, hello Gail, the virtual card class is going to be based around um, simply succulents this month. So this is going to be the technique card. These kits will go out in the mail tomorrow. So anybody who places a $35 order, you can get actually one of the card kits. The other two cards um, aren't within reaching distance. But they are super cute. So we get together once a month and we always pick a stamp set because that way you have the stamp set to make your cards. And you should be able to make everything that I design and you get all the card kit pieces for that. And then on um, mm -hmm. July 9th, I'm moving my games night to July 9th just because it gives me more time to design things. And I want to theme it this month around a drink theme or a mocktail theme so stay tuned for that so July night so I'm half sold out already on games night I've got a couple spots left I'll be advertising it today when I send out an email and then on August 21st if you're looking for a new class to try we're gonna have a cocktails and card class again hello Cindy how are you today so cocktails and cards was really fun we had a lot of fun so you basically get a kit and it contains the supplies to make the cocktails and then four cards so these are gonna be the cocktail cards for August see look at we're gonna make one of these spinner cards and you get all the pieces pre-cut now you have to have the stamp set so I tried to just pick two stamp sets we used this one last time Oh, I might have to give you a jar image. I don't know. Oh, I can't do that. I don't know. I'll figure this one out. But how cute is that? And then these ones are mostly die cut, but they're cute. So these are the four cards for cocktails and cards, August 21st. And then you get a whole bucket of goodies to make your supplies. And you can make them as mocktails because they're super yummy either way. Okay, so those are the cards I wanted to share and two, if you place a $100 order, you get a card kit plus uh, the brand new In Color Jewels as well. Okay, I think I'm ready to get stamping. Are you guys ready to get stamping? Oh, I should mention as well, if you have a demo number starting on July 1st, we can do a pre-order from the brand new catalog. And in fact, on June 22nd, we're going to get a sneak peek of what the new holiday catalog is. And if you're a customer and you've ordered within since January through me, I'm going to just mail you a brand new catalog as well. So I just thought I would mention that. 
Um, and then if you need the starter kit, it's $135 and you get $165 in product. It's always a good value. One of the things you could pick up are the give it a whirl dies if you like, which are super fun. Or if you're kind of new to stamping, the best way is to get a few girlfriends together organize a stamp night. I'll bring all the supplies and run it for you. And then if there's any hostess benefits, you can use those hostess benefits to help pay for your starter kit, right? So it's even cheaper. So I always like to mention that option as well. Okay, are you guys ready to play with these Give It A Whirl dies? Still wish I knew where that cheat sheet was. So instead, I'll just show you the dies. So these are a standalone die set. And what I mean by standalone is that there is no bundle for it. It's actually $53, but look at all the different dies that you get. So these are kind of the shapes that go with it. And this is why I'm bummed about my cheat sheet. I keep looking going, where is it? I had it earlier. And what this does is it allows you to have different shapes so that oh yeah I've lost everything interesting so what I did on my cheat sheet <clears throat> that I don't have right now is I made a template and what I did is took a piece of whisper white cardstock and I die cut all four of these out and in fact you know what I'm just going to show you and I'm going to make another one because if you buy these dies you need to do this. So you're going to go like this. And I always cut my cardstock down to five and a half inches because I just find it makes it easier, makes a nice template. And it is just shocking to me that I turned around and all my stuff is missing. Do you guys ever do that? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this down quickly. And I'm just creating a template because I want to show you why. I think I need new plates, guys. What do you think? I think these are pretty messy. Okay, let's get in the view of the camera. So, oh, I think Lindsay's here too. Hello, Lindsay. Nice to see you. Okay, so let's go like this. I keep looking over because I'm thinking if I just look over, it's going to magically appear because I cleaned up right before I did my video and I have a feeling I put my cheat sheet in one of my folders with all my paper. Okay, so now I've got this done. I don't really need the washi tape. Okay, this is now gonna be my kind of new cheat sheet. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And then I also need one more for stamping. And I had a template done, or do I have a template? Oh no, my template's in here. Thank goodness I'm not missing that. Okay, let's just move this out of the way for a second. And I'll show you why I needed my cheat sheet template. So this is what you can do with this die. Like I said, it works with a whole bunch of different things, but once you have a template done, and I'm gonna cut it down and just keep it in with the dies, this is what you can do. You can take your catalog and you can go, ooh, the round shape I can put a baby turtle in. Um, with the rectangle, no, oh, little one will fit. You know, with the stellar birthday that's $29, out of this world will fit. And it kind of is a great guide because you can go through the catalog, you know, and see which images you may actually want to use with the Give It A Whirl dies. And there's a whole bunch of different ones, right? Like, look at this set. This would be perfect, Shaded Summer, you know, thank you. Some friendships, oh, some friendships are meant to be. And that's why it's really nice to have a guide like this. And that's why I'm keeping mine in with my dies because then I won't lose it again. Okay, so I'm going to jump back here. So that's a template that you can make with this. This is a huge, huge set. It's got two main pieces to put your kind of mechanisms together, which I will set aside. And then you have a choice of doing 
four types of windows. They have a heart, they have a circle, they have a rectangle, and then they have sort of a window shape. I also like the fact that there's some super cute clouds. There's some little embossed arrows that you can emboss in your cardstock. So instead of putting a die cut arrow, I could have just run this through like so and just embossed it. And that way, you know, you're supposed to turn it. And then it's got, you know, three kinds of hearts, two sets of stars, uh, a little label piece. And then this does the, cuts out the scallop shape and it coordinates with the circle. So that's why it's $50, $53. It's not cheap, but I think this is gonna be a keeper and it works with so many of your existing stamp sets. Okay, let me just set this aside for a second. And we're gonna show you how to make um, well, maybe I'll just show you this card quick, right? That's kind of that one window. Isn't that super cute? Like, who does not love cocktails? And uh, the other one we'll put together. So let's get stamping now. Okay, step one. My very first card, I decided to use this cute peekaboo farm. Um, I just thought these guys were cute. So you just have to stamp a wall. And then all these little critters have a spot to put their little... Their little hooves, like, isn't that just so cute? And I love the sending hugs down here. And I love the little critter faces. So let me show you how I did that. I'll move that out of the way. So Peekaboo Farm is $23. So, you know, it's not too bad. Oh, I can't do Peekaboo Farm first, you guys. It's too hard. You know what? I'm going to jump back here. Change my mind. This is a card I made the other day. Now it didn't use the window, but kind of a similar technique. And so I wanted to show you how to actually make this style because this is the easiest. So if you get these dies, um, this is probably where you wanna start. Okay, so I got the pieces already pre-cut. I'm just gonna stick these here so I don't lose them all. I've cut a card base, which is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Okay, let's just set these up here. And then this is the main mechanism, well, one of the main mechanisms that you need for this. And I'm just gonna center it on my Knight of Navy cardstock and basically just cut it out. So let's pull this up here. This is my, I wanna call it a big shot, it's not a big shot. What is it, you guys? What's the correct term? Big boss, there we go. This is the big boss. And I like how you can just put this down. Oh, hold on a second. Which one was I doing? I am doing this one. Yeah, I want the window. Okay. So I need to grab this piece as I die cut. So this is really cool because you can see these window pieces have a little hole and they connect in here and you can rotate them depending on if you want, you know, if you want it more centered, if you want it a little more off to the side, maybe I'll put this one off to the side, kind of like it is in the catalog. One thing I love is that the Stampin' Up! designers do a really good job with samples in the catalog. It's more of an idea book. Okay, it's slightly off-center, which is good for me today. And then I'll show you two ways that you can put these together as well. Okay, so step one. It has now cut out my window and it has um, popped, got a little hole in here for my brad. And see how it's not coming very clear? You should actually clear it each time. Well, it did poke it out nice. Never mind. we are good to go. Okay, we'll set this aside. Hi, Noelle, how are you doing today? And Linda's here, hello, Linda. Nice to see you. Okay, so this is what I've got. Now, the fun part with this is that you can also cut, you need this little circle piece, like so. This is the one I need to clear. I keep forgetting to clear this. 
and then it just gets harder when you do that. Look how cute this is. So all I did was take the stamp set, Stellar Birthday, which is $29. And these little guys are just perfect shapes to actually fit in here. Now, when you die cut this, you can see it kind of creates an impression on your circle, which I really like because it kind of makes grid marks. Now, if I really wanted to, see how you line up this hole with this hole on here? Um, you could actually, you know, make a pencil mark so that you know exactly when you're stamping your image that it's going to be the frame in the frame that you want. But honestly, I'm kind of a lazy stamper and that would just be too hard for me. So I didn't bother with that. Um, I'm also taking one of these extra circles that I punch, um, that I use. Should I do that? No, I don't think so. I think I'm just going to go like this because it's already got a hole in there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so there's kind of two ways that you can do this. Stampin' Up! sells these really great round and square brads. They come in all different shapes. I want like the little skinny one though. Let's get this one. And then if I wanted, I could actually just attach the brad. Okay, and then it makes kind of a tight spin. If I want it to be a little bit looser of a spin, what I can then do is get one of these, a poker, and I like to use my, what's this scrubby brush, this pad? I'm just gonna kind of make a poke mark in the center. There we go. And then you can actually attach this to the back and then it spins a lot nicer and then you don't even have to have a hole in your front. And you can use designer series paper. It really doesn't matter what you use. I should have just poked a bigger hole, but that's okay. There we go. And then when you go to assemble it, you put your dimensionals on here, but I'll show you here in a second. We'll go like this. Okay, so that's on there now. And see, then you can just have it spin like that. And you can add your dimensionals on here. But because I have a hole, I think I'm going to go back to the other way. I played with this so much. I had so much fun with these. Because like I said, this is the very, very beginner one. So let's just keep it simple. So you poke it in like this. Your hole's already done. And I didn't put mine too tight, right? I want it kind of loose so it spins nice. Now this set has some stars. So let's start stamp some stars on the front of your card. Once I started playing with these, I, could, I couldn't stop actually. I started this at about eight this morning. Well, I made one last night and then I'm like, wow, this is just so fun. And then the sample in the catalog actually has some embossing on it, but I wanted this to be my super fast card. Okay, now that we have that on there, I'm gonna use four Stampin' Dimensionals or five Stampin' Dimensionals. You know, use whatever you want, but make sure that you're not sticking down the wheel. You want your wheel to be able to swing free, spin free, I guess that would be. Has anybody tried to make one of these cards yet? Hi, Kathy, how are you doing? This is so cute. This is so fun, these cards. Okay, so I'm just gonna center mine. And like I said, this is the basic card. Like, look how cute that is. So see, it's a little bit tighter to spin you can see the brad on here. So if that bothers you, you could actually hide the brad um, underneath if you wanted to. But then I've already pre-done this little astronaut. We're gonna do Celebrating You is a Blast. So let's put her down. I'll just use some liquid glue. I don't really have a sample made, so I don't really know what the card looks like. It's kind of in my head. Do you guys ever design like that? Okay, let's put her right there. Let's put the sentiment here. 
and I use my stamping blends to color my images. I just thought I would do that ahead of time for you to save a bit of time. And this is, what color did I use? I used Daffodil Delight. And then we'll just put these on quickly and then my card will be pretty much done. I could seriously keep playing with these so much. And then I like the sentiments in here. There's no one like you in the whole universe. You know, you're out of this world. I've seen some really, really fun, creative things done with this stamp set so far. It was going to be my stamp set of the month, but I don't know. We'll have to see. But I think I will feature it. And I think this would make a really, really fun class. Okay, one more on here. I'll just put it down low. But you can see if you just cut your pieces, it doesn't take that long to do. And I could put ribbon if I want, but I think I'm going to stop there with this one because this is just my basic one. But see, we got the astronaut, astronaut dog, have a stellar birthday, and then the planets. And like I said, the easiest way for me to do that is you can make a template. You can kind of out uh, draw draw where where you want to you know color your little critters in there and we should be good to go okay now let me move that because that's sticky okay so that is card number one now card number two is a little more difficult because i'm just gonna move this out of the way i gotta clean up a second before i lose everything again Card number two, it's horizontal. So how do you do this? these horizontal cards when the die is this way, right? So this is a card that we're going to make. So again, I needed a spinner wheel, which I've already got. So that's exactly the same, but this is kind of the trick to this card. And I've already cut my horse. We've got two clouds. And I have not stamped, oh, there's my template. We have not stamped any of the little critters yet because that's what I wanted to show you. Now, this time, when I take my template that looks like this, and I had a what not to do card as well. Let me just close this so I can find it. Nope, it's going to be where my template is too. I wonder what on earth I did with that. Okay, so we got to make sure, first of all, that when we have this spinner, it's not going to stick out the top. The spinner is going to be down here, all right? So we got to make sure we're kind of centering this on the back, and we want it to pop out so it can spin, like so. And then once you're happy with that, then I can put this down here and I kind of want to center it. And it's going to go there. And then I need my circle piece. So my circle will go here and I need a pencil. And you're probably thinking, what is she doing? Okay, I'm going to leave this here because this is my template. We need to make sure that this is going to be over here like so. Because remember how I said it, I uh, need a little dot. There we go. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to line up the, the hole here with that little dot I created. And then I should be safe to actually die cut this out. And it'll be right about here. And then I'm going to have to cut this manually as well. So this time I only use this for a template. I'm not actually using it to cut. And that's going to give me a whole bunch of spinner options. And that opens up like the whole world of this fun die. Okay. So I see Sylvia's here and Tony's here. Hello, girls. Thank you for joining me today. Um, it's very overcast and rainy today in Edmonton. So we normally have tons of sunshine. So it's not 
the nicest day out there today, but it's sure a fun day to stamp. I think I want to make 20 more spinner cards. That's what I'm going to call these. Spinner cards. Okay, so you can see my dot was, my hole on my die was lined up with the pencil mark I made. And then that's going to cut this out. I can remove this piece now. And my washi tape. And then I also need to cut out this piece. So let's go like that. Put it right about there. There we go. And then we're going to roll this one through. So whenever I buy a stamp or a die set, I usually only recommend it if I can use it one or two different ways. But now that I discovered how to do a horizontal window or landscape view, I guess, um, I think it opens up a whole world of possibilities for this, for these uh, dies. Because they're $53. There's got to be some other things I can do than just make one type of card before I recommend it to people. Okay, so we've got that. I kind of want to try a heart card too, but that'll be another day. Okay, so now I've got my base. And we've got this little spinner piece. So let's make sure that it's going to work, that it's going to spin, but we'll put that right about here, right? But now I have to create a little hole. So that's where I got to pull out my scrubby pad again. And we got to make a hole. Let's make sure it's lined up before I go and intentionally poke it. You know what? I'm going to use this one. This one's really old, but it's super sharp. You know, as opposed to just sharp. Okay. And again, I didn't really have to poke a hole in there if I didn't want to, but I just find it's easier. Okay, and let's get some more brads out. I think I need to go back in my little junk drawer and find a whole bunch of these brads. I used to have tons of them. I like these long ones though, because you can control um, how tight it is. Okay, so now that that's set up, I'm not gonna do that just yet because I wanna do my stamping. So I'm putting my template on here and you can see that I'm just lining it up with my sort of, scored marks, I guess you could say. And I'm going to get my little pig and let's stamp my little pig in black ink, black memento ink. And I want the little piggy ears to go there. Okay. And then I'll do another one here. And which critter do I have lined up? I have the little cow. I know this set is sort of more for kids, but I'm telling you, if somebody gave me this card, I would absolutely love it. I am a big kid at heart, and I don't think I will ever change. Okay, so that's how you can, you know, stamp within your grid. Because if you don't use a template, when you go to spin, you'll get your pig and your cow blending together. And that won't look so good. So that's what I did there. And then I took some blends really quick. So I'm just using Petal Pink for their little noses. Should we give the little piggy a little bit of coloring there? And then I used Crumb Cake for the little cow spots on the cow. I'm just going to do this really quick. I actually love Stampin' Blends. I need more Stampin' Blends. I'm actually wearing mine out. Oh, and then we need like a flirty flamingo or something. What color is this? You know what? This will be close enough. This is actually a retired blend. I never sell my blends. I keep them forever. Okay, and then let's just pull that down. There we go. Okay, he's ready to go. See, isn't that fast? There we go. And now I can actually put it in the window. So I will get my Brad again. 
There it is. There it is. I want a white one this time. And like I said, if I didn't want to poke a hole through this, I could actually attach it to here. Now, maybe I will show you that because it just gives you another option, right? But then I have a hole I'll have to do something with. Anyway, this is actually how I did this card. You can see how there's no hole. So the spinner part's actually on here. And then what you do is you put two dimensionals down on this part. And then this anchors to the card and then it spins, which is kind of cool. So let me get out my card base. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. So we'll get out Crumb Cake card base. How do you guys store how do you guys store your paper? You know how I store mine? I have a file folder with every single color in it. And then I keep them in hanging files. Because then when I can start my scrapbooking retreats again, they're portable. And then I just take the, the bucket with me when I go to my scrapbooking retreats. I usually have one in October. So I don't know what we're gonna do this year. Who knows if we'll be in person. Okay, so there's my card base that I need, like so. So I just cut my paper in half and just scored it in half again. So that was five and a half, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then what I can do is go like this, get this lined up like so. We're going to center that. See, it's actually easier for me to have stabbed this one through the middle too. But I really want to show you this option as well. Okay, let's pull this off. Pull this off. Okay, so now what I've done is this is now anchored to the card base. And then see, it spins a lot nicer than um, this one. This one is attached directly to the pool party cardstock but that's why I just wanted to show you an option on here it's always nice to have options and then really the card front I didn't even need to poke a hole right why not keep it easier okay let's just see if this will line up for me okay because we want to go like this here's my little piggy I think that looks pretty good I could maybe move it over a little bit more, but that's okay. Let's check it out. Did I glue it down? I did glue it down. Okay, my tip of the day is don't glue it down. Oh yeah, don't, don't glue it down here either. Okay, ready for the spinning? Let's check it. Yeah, there he goes. Okay, now I'm crooked over here. So let's just move that like so. Okay. So there's my little spinner part done. Isn't he cute? So he says, hello there, right? Super cute. And then the next thing I'm going to do is put down my green piece. And then I've got some clouds. This is why I'm just so puzzled that my pieces disappeared when it was all prepped. Maybe I prepped too early, you guys. Okay, let's get this out and we'll cut this piece. This is going to be one inch. Should be one by five. Yep. And this is the designer series paper um, that's in the regular catalog. It comes in a six by six format and it's bright. Because I thought I needed to use granny apple green. And then we'll just put this down like so, just to give it some color. There we go. Wow, my pieces are really off today. This just makes me laugh. Okay, let's put this down. And then we'll put the cloud down. And then I think we're gonna pop up the little horse and then you know what, because I have this there, I think I am going to cut a frame. Which means, yeah, let's pull this off. 
Do you guys ever read design cards once you've made them? Oh, we need a we need a bigger piece here. Okay, so here we go. We've got our little horse here. And I want to stamp sending hugs, so let's get that out. Where'd my peekaboo farm go? I mean, who doesn't love sending hugs, right? I'll we'll pull that on this block. And we're just gonna do that in black memento ink. Let me just move this off to the side. Oh, there's my sending hugs. See, I wasn't going crazy. That's okay. Let's just do it again. We're gonna put sending hugs here. We got sending hugs there for my next card. Isn't that cute? Hello there. And I don't like that because I poked a hole and I was showing you how to do the other way. So this is a fun thing too that we can do. Let's see what paper I have. Will that fit? Nope, not quite. I think we'll do this though. Or should I do this? What do you think? What color should I do girls? You know what? I think we're going to do Bermuda Bay. And then I'll just cut this really quickly and then it'll create a fun frame. So I'll just move these out of the way. There we go. Hi, Margaret. How are you? Don't worry about leaving. It is taped. You can always come back and watch it again, right? Okay, so now we need to die cut that. Here is my other plate. And I have a blog, karinascreations.com, and that's where I'm going to put a picture, post a picture of my template when I find it. That is just a mystery to me. Okay, so this is what this does. Let's pull that off to the side. We now have that. See, doesn't that just finish it off really nicely? And now I don't have my hole because I really didn't like that hole. That was bugging me. Okay, here we go. So this kind of shows how you can do kind of a landscape card. And then what I can do too here is... Um, I could stamp, well, I could do a little arrow. I could emboss a little arrow on here if I wanted to. Okay, let's just close this up. And then when I did this too, I could have actually used a pencil mark for perfect placement, right? See, look at the little pig. And then here's the other one. So I don't know, which one do you like better? Do you like it better with the frame where you don't see the brad, that's about the only difference, right? To brad or not to brad? That is the question. Just kidding. Okay, I thought that was kind of cute. So we've made these two cards today. We made the stellar birthday today. Um, this happy birthday cocktail card is exactly the same pretty much as this one, except I use the circle shape. And then you've got the cocktails coming in. And then I had another sample. This is going to be part of my cocktail and cards class. So if you don't live in Edmonton, you could still participate in this class. I would just let you do the card kits for $25 and not do the cocktails. So that's an option too. So these are the cards I shared today. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you wanted to place an online order, you go to karinachin.stampinup.net. I started a new hostess code because I closed off the party to buy extra games night prizes yesterday. So this is a new code. And if you place a $35 order, you can get a card kit for my class that's in not this Saturday, but next Saturday and a hundred dollar order. You can get some new in color embellishments. So thank you so much for watching. Oh, I see Karen. Oh, everybody likes the frame. So Tracy likes a frame. Karen likes the frame. That's so interesting. Sharon, you like the frame too. Hey, interesting. Well, thanks you guys for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. And if you're just coming in, um, I'll post this soon. You can watch the replay. 
Okay, bye.